Down East Maine is the eastern third of coastal Maine, ending at Quaddy Head, the easternmost point of land in the United States. This part of Maine has some of the most isolated coast, islands, and peninsulas in the U.S. Dramatic and beautiful, this coast ranges from hard rock cliffs and flat granite shorelines to cobble beaches and berms. The Down East Coast was formed 360 to 425 million years ago during the Devonian and Silurian periods with the last major modification by an ice cap one million years ago. Today we see the weathered result and find it remote, beautiful, and populated by lobster fishermen and their boats, living in a brief moment of geologic history. The shoreline at Moose Cove, just south of the Canadian border near Quaddy Head, is formed by nearly vertical layers of volcanic and sedimentary rock enclosing beaches of gravel formed by wave action, working on the least durable rock type over thousands of years. Plant and tree species are growing here in rather extreme conditions and take a tremendous beating from the weather including wind, temperature, and salt spray. Ribbons of dark rockweed on the cobble beaches indicate high tide lines. The vertical lens of rock in the distance has been defying the sea for some 250 million years, and while shedding very large boulders due to freezing and thawing plus wave action, it is still there. One has to admire the staying power of these rock formations that last millions of years. The point at Bogbrook Preserve on Moose Cove is one of the few places on the main coast easy to hike to. Much of the coast is inaccessible due to private ownership or in preserves where one must hike long trails to visit the coast. A few of these trails are short. Moose Cove is a great example of vertically oriented volcanic and sedimentary rock from the Silurian period often enclosing gravel beaches. These rocky shores look like they are slowly succumbing to the harsh weather they are exposed to, but when you take into account their millions of years of age, they are not changing at all. If we could come back in a thousand years, they will look largely the same, although climate changes may have them under more water and the vegetation growing on top may be quite different. Koreabog was an antenna farm for the U.S. Navy until 2005, but now is an excellent example of a coastal plateau bog with an access trail and platform, easy to visit. The bog is large, circular, with concentric patterning and a raised central plateau free of trees. The southern and eastern portions of the bog have well-defined ridge and hollow characteristics of a pattern bog with hollows containing water for long periods. In addition to the typical sedge moss plant community, there are numerous dwarf shrubs here, abundant deer hair sedge, lichen, and several ridges with black spruce and black crowberry. Rare stunted jack pine can be found on the periphery. In a study by the University of Maine in 1994 and 1995, Bryophyte species identified at Korea Bog, or Heath, totaled 125. 72 of these were true mosses, 29 were liverworts, and 23 were sphagnums. Another of Maine's coastal raised bogs is located on the Boot Hill Preserve, also close to Quaddy Head, south of the Canadian border in down east Maine. This bog has stunted black spruce and tamarack trees and looks very much like a boreal landscape in Labrador, far to the north. Plants typical of a northern bog are here, including carnivorous pitcher plants, sundews, and the occasional orchid. The rugged cliff faces at the Boot Hill coast are tall, dramatic, and spectacular.
The southern point of Petit Manan is open, and while affected significantly by salt spray and harsh oceanic climate conditions, it has many of the characteristics and species of a coastal plateau bog. Few people have seen this point, as it is difficult to get to. The Petit Manan Peninsula is nearly an island because of its isolation and has many rare or exemplary plant communities, according to an inventory published by the Maine Natural Areas Program. Among them are black spruce barren, brackish tidal marsh, coastal plateau bog ecosystem, down east maritime shrubland, jack pine woodland, maritime slope bog, maritime spruce fir forest, northern white cedar swamp, open headland, spruce pine woodland, and tall grass meadow. Found here are rare plants, animals, and wildlife habitats, and the islands offshore have isolated populations of rare seabird nesting sites, including puffins. The green area to the right is a rare coastal or maritime slope bog. The peat layer is thin, the slope is in the 5 to 10 percent range, and these maritime slope bogs have black crowberry, baked appleberry, and sheep laurel as indicator species in addition to their sphagnum mosses. Great Wass Island has three hydrologically connected maritime raised bogs, slightly sloped from one to the other. These bogs are sometimes called coastal slope bogs. The three bogs have lawns of deer hair sedge, carnivorous plants like sundew and pitcher plants, some shrubs, and a very few stunted trees as the nutrients available from the acidic peat soils are very limited. The Great Wasp Pluton, a mass of igneous rock beginning as molten magma, thrust through the Earth's surface as the source of granite, seen nearly everywhere on the island's coast and barrens. The granite barrens in the middle of the island host two very unique jack pine communities and are the best examples of jack pine in coastal Maine. At low tides, the extent of granite reefs surrounding Great Wasp can be seen in the intertidal zone, along with extensive beds of rockweed. The area around Great Wasp is one of the richest intertidal zones in Maine. The point of Petit Manan shows a diverse group of plant communities, including a saltwater marsh, coastal plateau bog, and open headland, all protected by a cobble berm of various heights. The berms have an ever-present black and brown line of dead rockweed, with the black indicating a high tide line. The dark patches offshore in the intertidal zone are rockweed-covered granite, similar to Great Wass Island. The cobble beaches are sometimes replaced by flat slices of granite and metamorphic sedimentary rock brought here by lava on its millions of years ago formation of this coast. Where there is little or no offshore reef to protect the shore, the cobble berm is both higher and the cobbles are larger. Scallops in the berm are formed when strong storm wave action is at an angle to the berm. Woodpond Point at Petit Manan has features of the entire peninsula and is a lovely but hard to reach spot. The two rock points at Hamilton Cove, just south of the Canadian border in down east Maine, are remarkably vertical and dramatic. These points protect Hamilton Cove and two beaches that are another example of vertically oriented volcanic and sedimentary rock from the Silurian period, enclosing gravel beaches. In this case, illustrating how far apart the vertically oriented layers can be, allowing rather large beaches to develop from the slightly less durable rock weathered for millions of years. The rock layers incline slightly left to vertical in both bays, as seen here. 
Yet on the points, we see voids eroded from less durable layers slightly right of vertical. It's hard to imagine the forces that worked on these layers 425 million years ago to create such complex formations. The down east coast of Maine includes a diverse and unique collection of landscapes formed 360 to 425 million years ago that are dramatic and often spectacular.